Hi, Lee. Hi. How are you? Doing? <laughs> I think I'm I'm beginning to be awake now. I'm uh, uh, just in the yeah. mundane sense. <laughs> yes, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, just just to introduce you, um, we met through Dowsing. And we were both giving a talk to an audience of dousers um, not too long ago. And your talk and your passion about art and icons, and the, it's not just the artistry, it's the symbology and the spiritual journey of creating mm. an icon and the multi-layered, multifaceted nature of it. It struck such a deep chord in me as an audience member when you shared that wow. i Great. was okay. transformed I, I was literally transformed it felt like you helped me to turn a page in my book of amazing illumination and so i just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that it's 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 really lovely we've connected after the talk because it was so moving for me and and and, and such an epiphany kind of moment um and it felt really like a natural step to sort of you know when when we were talking and i i mentioned i'd restored a russian icon and then yes so many different connections that yes. shared quite quickly yeah and i'm just really grateful to sort of know you and and get to know you more and um, see see where this conversation takes us <laughs> and so well, thank you by the same token, you know, I'm I was totally captivated by your talk because um, for me it was watching somebody who, you know, I I did I sort of brought f a lot of facts together from my research, but I was watching you as you were speaking and you were um, living those facts. If if that makes sense, you you had incredible incredible high energy and so everything you said made sense because um we were able i think to connect with what you were saying through your energy um and one of the things i was really grateful for too is because i think i was speaking after you and um you gave us a sort of a, a quick technique to um that was an equivalent of of a long meditation and i thought I'm going to do this no matter what, because I'm really nervous. And it was amazing how effective it was. So you were actually taking this energy uh, that I've been reading about from all these sort of ancient sort of texts and you were making it work for you. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was really amazing to, to see that. So you, um, you were actually um, living uh, what you were explaining to us. Um, mm. and, and that was you. Um, you could feel that in the room mm. uh, so that's thank lovely you. thank you thank Lee. <laughs> and <laughs> we've just started talking um, as we were getting ready for this consciousness co-creates conversation mm. and we started talking about how we are stardust and I, I was relating a story about how I was um, having having a drink with my dad in the pub and how open my dad is for when I connected with the idea of my my soul seed and going on an inner journey for where it, it was created and, and the sort of birthing of it, the opening of this beautiful soul seed was on a place <laughs> in a very long way away called Mintaka. <laughs> And it felt like there was, it was a watery planet. It was just water and it was clear and crystal. And there was this sense of moving and gliding through the water and just so much grace. And it was such a joyful place. Um, and I shared it with my dad over a pint and, and said, dad, you love the water too. I'm wondering whether your maybe your soul sees from Mintaka too. That kind of might make sense. And he said, yeah, brilliant. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that and how open my father is, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, he's 87 and he's just literally open. And um, just 
just the concept of stardust and and you do you want to sort of you know sort of recap on what you were saying about how yeah you felt about that concept i and- think i've i w- the reason why i um so enjoy our conversations is because um you put into practice what the things that i'm reading about so if I'm reading about some ancient wisdom uh, and things like that and, and things that explain that we are stardust, not only are you familiar with that concept, but your immediate thinking is I'm from a different star system or you've already absorbed that and assimilated that idea. And I think you feel that naturally. So it's incredibly uplifting to hear somebody actually not only talk about these concepts, but actually apply them to their own life and their own thinking. I mean, that, that I find not only fascinating, but very uplifting mm-hmm. too, because even if um, people, I mean, I'm studying the yoga sutras of Patanjali um, and whilst sort of grappling with the concepts that he gives, mm-hmm. um, to have someone actually already living those concepts um, is is uh, is really inspirational. So um, it, it, that's why I really like our conversations because you're already living it. <laughs> right. And it's it's lovely to share and 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 feel feel that sort of um, play, isn't it? In the play and yeah. the the consciousness between yes. us, we are the consciousness, and and yeah. um, and it, it the there was uh, I was I was on a call last last night with Evelyn Mulders, who's the creator of Sound Essences, who's a master oh. alchemist, also a dowser, and a mm. kinesiologist. She's um, very very established in that, and her journey. I've got Sound Essences, uh, Sound Essences in the background actually, um, because I, I felt drawn to bring them into this conversation and see where we go with 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 them with. Mm. The, under the aegis of creativity and yeah. expression and um she was talking about a story when she was she she's an engineer and technologist by training and profession originally and she loved 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 knowledge understanding processing it working things out developing almost mm. strategies and solutions for things. And she 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 was saying, yeah, give me some numbers, give me some things to solve, and I'm totally there. And her journey through her developing these sound essences, which first started coming through to her in the 90s, so there's just been a really beautiful journey mm. where it's information is kind of dropped in into her awareness. And what does she do with that information? Where does she go has mm. been the journey and the alchemy sort of expression yes. and it's just fantastic this story she was talking about because she she felt that she needed she needed knowledge and she really enjoyed knowledge and and yet she was conscious of how her left brain the rational thinking compartmentalizing aspect mm-hmm. of her incredible mind would take hold and be riding roughshod over her intuition, if you like, or her accessing yeah. her her creative, a sort of m- maybe open part of the brain. And her mentor at the time mm. said, okay, right, what we're going to do, we, we went, he, they went for a walk in, in, it's in Canada where she's living and on this retreat and they went for a walk in the woods and her mentor um, who helped her develop this um this path with with the alchemy of the sound essences she said to evelyn okay i'm gonna cover your eyes and you find your way back wow yeah and can you imagine what her left brain was thinking <laughs> <laughs> it's in the forest in canada like what yeah the heck? and she did yeah. She found her way back. Yeah. And it helped her awaken her senses. Wow. The sensory world became through that single mm. 
experience and expression mm. of finding her way back without her seeing eyes. Mm. Uh, and it just resonated to sort of bring that up in the context of what you're saying with the acquisition and kind of imbibing of that knowledge yeah. and how yeah. how does it land? How does it settle? Does it stay within the brain? How can we be living expressions of, of that? And 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 also I I love studying, I love understanding, I love I love the feeling. I think it's an experiential thing when I read. It's, I can't, I'm, it's not that I can't, but I, I I kind of very much prefer to to read slowly as if the words are being spoken as yeah. prose. And yeah. then I feel them and then they percolate and then I, something lands. It's like quite kinesthetic, I guess, the way I like to read and, and the pictures that you get and the sensory world. So I guess what you were saying at, at the beginning about this sort of me being this living version of, of the, yeah. the things, I I just totally, totally love that because for me, if, if it's, I guess it's sort of boiling down to creativity as well, Lee. When mm -hmm when we express ourselves creatively that naturally is an openness you know because you need to be open to receive the inspiration from above from around us and 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 allow it to come in and land somehow you know i i can see it so clearly with the musical process when people yeah. are composing or channeling lyrics or whatever they're doing it kind of it's it's magical, isn't it? That sort of where does that inspiration come from? And, uh -huh. and, <laughs> yeah. and 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 when when we can really tap into that, um, it it's so beautiful. It it's it's magical. And and when we express it back, when when we are feeling it and 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 receiving it, and then choosing to sort of bit like clay, artist clay or something, we choose to sort of mm. turn it in our hands and our consciousness, however we choose to sort of process that. It can be cooking, it can be, you know, it, you know, arranging leaves in nature, it can be mm. anything. Um, mm. And it's our way of honouring back to the divine, to the source of all that is. Yes. How we appreciate the gift yes. of the creativity of our own life yeah. As well as all of the creativity held in all of consciousness, mm. thanks to source, you know? I think that's amazing um, because one of the things I was thinking of when um, we were speaking about the, the sort of theme or the, the ideas for this was really um, at what point does creation stop? Um, because, and what what point does it start? I mean, you could argue that actually our whole lives are a creation. You know, whatever we create is an added sort of uh, moving on from that. So whatever we create um, on behalf of whatever is channeling to us or channeling has, um, it, it's not totally the right word, but um, yeah. we, we're sort of um, the conduit for those sort of forces. Yes. So we cr let's say we create a piece of art and then someone else views that art and it's what it's inspiring in them is, mm -hmm. is inspiring part of that whole creative process. And if they go on to create something of their own, they're taking an essence of what we've uh, facilitated um, and moving it on. So every sort of permutation of something we create just goes on and on and on. Even if it's, it, um, say, our art outlives us and generations can see that art, mm -hmm. or if generations see what has been inspired by that art, you know, the, it is limitless. Um, and that's the beauty of it, really, mm -hmm. um, that, that the viewer is as much involved in that process uh, as, as anything else. Mm. Mm. And yeah, beautiful. And and 
I guess I'm I'm curious for for maybe you to to share what drew you in particular because you're you you train to be a graphic designer yeah you you know you've had that as your professional life and then mm. you you've been drawn to icons and maybe maybe we can start by explaining what an icon is um some people know them best by calling them russian icons yes um, i i can bring one that you've you've created um, up onto the screen and share it. I mean, maybe that's a nice thing to sort of help illustrate, like, boom, <laughs> this is an icon. That, that would probably be the best thing because the one I've got is half painted here. So <laughs> that might be icon. lovely, lovely to see a sort of in work in progress one as well. Sure. But well, um, let's have a look. Um, yeah, have you got that? Um, so I'll bring this one up on, on the screen. Okay. Um, can you see... Yes. yes. So this this is one that you shared before and mm. it's just so beautiful. This is an icon. And um I'm just going to actually see if I can share maybe both of them at the same time in the moment. Um I'm just going to I've got two up and um I just I just love them. I'm just going to share my whole desktop so we can see them side by side because I think they're oh. so beautiful. Right. Here we go. And um so we've got one that you created uh for a master in India. That's right. And another one you created of Saint, is that Maximus? Saint Maximus. Yeah. Um, Saint Maximus. There is absolutely a traditional um, Orthodox icon. Yeah, he was uh, painted for a commission, um, and I I've done more commissions really for um, private individuals who um, just want something to focus their prayer life on, but essentially. Icons within the are within the Greek and Russian Orthodox tradition, Christian tradition. They're used in the liturgy, so they're very much um, a part of worship. Um, they usually depict Jesus, well, Christ, um, Mother of God, um, saints, prophets, angels, um, and also we have festal icons that are scenes from the Bible that are used for specific times, festivals throughout the year. Um, but as I say, they're very much an integral part of the liturgy. So if you went to an Orthodox church, they would be seen not only throughout uh, the building as a, a decorative thing, um, but also um, specifically people would kiss them and, and pray with them. So mm. very much a focus, a visual mm. focus. Um, the icon um, that I'm seeing to my left um, is Sri Yukteswar, who is um, of the Kriya Yoga tradition. Um, he was a great guru in um, Yogananda's uh, book, Autobiography of a Yogi. Um, and that really was a commission because Sri Yukteswar does um, speak about uh, Christian views. Um, he says, if you're of a Western of the Western tradition, you should retain your Christian background, but that doesn't inhibit the Kriya Yoga practice um, because essentially it is the same message. Um, just through different um, gurus. Um, and the Sanskrit in his um, book is essentially the um, pinnacle of his teaching. It is in those short lines how to achieve uh, knowledge of God. Um, but is as in icons, um, any icon you'll see, anything really, if you've got an object, it's given some kind of treatment to make it look odd. So 
the book that he's holding doesn't look right. It doesn't look realistic, but it's supposed to show that he is actually not in material form. He yeah. is um, removed from that. He is in a spiritual, um, uncreated form. Um, but uh, so that's just to remind us that he is um, not hu a human form. Any yes. Longer. I guess I guess that kind of is illustrated by the name, the terminology icon. It's a representation yeah. and almost an abstraction of a truth yes. Yes. and a concept. And and when when you are creating, because when you look at Sri Yukteswar's eyes, yes, how how do you feel? Because there's that sort of peace and tranquility. Yes. And surrender almost when you connect with mm -hmm. how he's coming through to you. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I'm just really absorbing it now, really looking into his eyes. And and it it just feels like you, you are truly becoming one with the mm -hmm. master and the gold luminosity that, that surrounds him kind of, beckons and it's it's just yeah yeah just silence <laughs> the the mm. yeah I'm, I'm kind of going beyond words right now how, how would you describe how it feels to create this connect with the energy of the master or the saint and and the process when when you've described the layering it's mm. it's there's this structure that's almost like a a discipline isn't there with that like you know a real practice that yeah. to get to this richness and this sort of sense of infinity that you get from the gold beautiful it's quite um an intense pro process of creating an icon. It, the orthodox traditional way of creating an icon was formulated in such a way that continual practice of icon painting would lead the iconographer to God realization. I mean, there, there's as mm -hmm. I'm convinced of that. It's mm -hmm. the way that. Um, Painting icons was actually a part of um, monastic life. The early iconographers were hesychasts, which meant that they were of a tradition where they wanted to experience gnosis, knowledge of God. Mm. That was their focus. And mm. icons really were a discipline in order to I shouldn't work, use the word achieve, but it, it, that's how we would understand it, to, to achieve this uh, gnosis, this knowledge mm. of God. Mm. So essentially, hesychasts would, and I understand there were female hesychasts as well, it wasn't just men, but mm. I, you know, because it's such a patriarchal tradition, extracting that kind of information is very difficult. But um, so they would be... Be, be lay people who um, went into this tradition, um, they would live really a very, um, well, they would live a hermit lifestyle and they would pray with the Jesus prayer or uh, the early monks, I don't think it was a Jesus prayer at that time, but it's essentially a mantra. And so they would keep praying um, these few words, the prayer of the heart it was known as. Mm. Um, and through that process, the uh, chattering mind was subdued. And in fact, um, I did an experiment, which I really need to continue with, and that is to keep on saying the Jesus prayer. And it gets to a stage where your mind is saying it so often that if, you go, if you're distracted and you think about something else, and then you stop thinking about something else, your subconscious mind is then, you notice that the prayer is being said in your mind. And I woke up one morning and my mind was saying a prayer. It was quite incredible. 
so these processes work. And if you couple that with um, all of the um, physical process of uh, producing an icon, so you would carve, you would you would basically start with with hacking down a tree for the wood. Um, yeah. They would carve the boards, um, which were done very delicately, and to stop warping, they would have um, sort of um, slats of wood uh, placed into the back of them uh, mm -hmm. to stop the warping. Then you'd have 15 layers of gesso, which is essentially marble and chalk dust mixed together with rabbit, rabbit skin glue. Um, over the top of linen that was placed on the board. Um, and, and that's just before you get to the painting process. Then it's the wow. gold that you put on. Um, that is a, a, a test of <laughs> uh, patience. And, and these are the things. You're, if, you, if, you, if you take that um, process of creating an icon and compare it to limbs of yoga, you are essentially going through the same things because um, you're, you've got ahimsa, non-violence. You've mm -hmm. got, so, um, so you, you limit the amount of, uh, you learn how to um, cut the wood in such a way that you're, you're making it as sustainable as possible. I mean, you can actually correlate the process Wow. Um, so you learn patience, um, all mm. these things take time. It takes time for the gesso to dry. It takes time for the clay bowl to dry in order to put the gold leaf on top. And you, as you're learning and you're trying to, um, make your hand and eye coordination good enough for the thin, thick, thin lines, which are calligraphic for icons. As you're learning that process, um, you get things wrong and you, you're frustrated with yourself and angry with yourself and you come to terms with, you know, your own anger and you're living alone. It's an intense time. So really all these things are coming out and it's a purification process not mm. only of um obviously the mind but the body as well mm. um and and so i think it's quite a remarkable um process and and it it probably was evolved beautifully through time but the people who originally um um produced um the very first icons i mean undoubtedly um, they were living in a completely different uh, state of consciousness. There's, there's no, there's no question in my mind. Um, can you feel that when you look at the work? Can you, yes. can you feel the degree of attainment that yes. that artist has, yes. let's say, achieved or expanded into? Um, yeah. Wow, that's. I that's yeah. incredible. Like the way you've described all those layers and the disciplines and the mapping, mm. the pattern matching with different traditions like the Kriya Yoga tradition mm. of just overcoming or integrating the mind with mantras. Yeah. And you mentioned the Jesus prayer. Could you, in case not everyone has, has come across that, what is the Jesus prayer? The Lord Jesus, it's, it's, um, it's a very simple prayer. In effect, it's Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me. Mm. And some people add additions to that, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, which I really like, um, have mercy upon me, a sinner. So there are sort of plug-ins to those, mm. those, those lines, depending oh. on what, is, what, what you feel is right for you. Yes. But essentially you start by saying it out loud um so monks on mount athos i think uh, are told to say it like they're given the, the a task of saying it two thousand times a day so your mind is your rational mind is is counting the number of times you're saying it and so it's absorbed in the in the number of times yeah and and so you're absorbing the um the the sentence um as well and then what happens is very beautifully the prayer 
is said to drop to the heart. And I think that's at the point where the subconscious mind takes over. Mm. It is then, it becomes an automatic thing, but, and this is the beauty of the prayer and the whole, it, it sounds sacrilegious to say process, because actually the dropping to the heart is the part of grace and that is the mystery that that is the part you can only plan to do we can only plan to do something mechanical but essentially the mystery is through grace we then start living the prayer mm. and so then life becomes different patience is gained the hand eye coordination becomes so much more acute and then the beauty of the line comes the paint application becomes thinner more sophisticated the the knowledge of which pigments to use together becomes intuitive the knowledge of what how to layer the paint in such a way that you are maximizing the vibe, the true vibration of the colour from uh, the icon. So, with we're using traditional pigments such as lapis, azurite. So the light with these crystalline um, pigments, the light comes through the pigments. It hits the white gesso and then comes back to the viewer's eye through all the this kaleidoscope of colour. Um, and that's designed then to pass the vibration to the viewer. So as great as it is to look at all these incredible icons um, on the web and uh, in books, to be able to stand in front of them um, is, uh, well, that that's beyond words because that is how um, they were meant to be viewed. This is amazing. The way, thank you, Lee, the way you convey the richer, deeper sort of processes and, and meanings mm. and practices and the way you've just described everything getting thinner and lighter, it's like the mm. levels that you, you go through with the dimensions and the frequencies raising as the more we yeah. practice on our inner world and drop into the heart from the mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. when I'm, I'm working with my my beautiful clients um mm. and we're talking about soul purpose and spiritual journey um we talk about how the whole point of life is to drop from the mind yeah into the heart it's a journey of a foot but it's the biggest journey of our life yeah, yeah. And, and the grace that that we can experience when we are seeing through the heart with our eyes literally yeah because there's many ways of yeah. seeing right <laughs> yes <laughs> and um yeah uh, it, it it's it's just so powerful to hear you mm. convey this and it just feels like this is your sole purpose to be this being connecting with and processing and the rigor and the discipline the self-inquiry and the beautiful artistry and creativity with that just structure supporting the mm -hmm. sort of expansion of that yeah. beautiful creativity it just feels so you <laughs> your note <laughs> and Thank you. Yeah. beautiful sort of singing that song and your your note and the, and the kaleidoscope yeah. color yeah it's really powerful to hear you convey this so thank you and Pleasure. how Pleasure. how would you describe being drawn to this like what what's what's your journey so far to sort of expand into this icon studying practice and sharing that knowledge as well you know, it's it's funny actually because I genuinely feel that I am two people. Mm. I can sense this greater overseer, but maybe two people is the wrong wrong 
phrase really. I can sense a a a, an, a very wise overseer who is who is being incredibly patient mm. with the physical me, mm. and I know that my discipline is the thing that stops me going further. But I have to take things one thing at a time. I have to have a carrot for the physical personality to catch up with this incredible wisdom. The mm. incredible wisdom says, this is what, you know, you will be capable of. Um, you can do this all the time. This is what's possible through, you know, one to two hours meditation every day. And then you won't even have to worry about meditation because actually the whole of life is a meditation, you know? So I, I, I'm catching snippets and understanding without words what I should be doing. And I'm just trying to catch up with that. Um, to be honest, it, it's a sense of being drawn at the first sort of first few steps was kicking and screaming um <laughs> but knowing i had to do things yeah. and and then eventually as you gain more experience and you're on the path for longer it's a it's a gradual surrender and someone um described it as a as a love story and i really believe it is because you are drawn by love and it's that's something you you can't um you can't extricate yourself from and it's about beauty and truth and what amuses me uh with due respect to people i've seen because i have been there myself um is that people i hear from people who've gone on icon courses and if they are brave enough to go on an icon course for a week this is something an icon tutor won't tell you um but at some point, there will be frustrations. At some point, there will be a brush thrown, tears. Why can't I do this properly? Um, <laughs> but it, that's all part of the process. Yeah. Um, I was in Watkins Bookshop. Mm, uh, special place there. <laughs> absolutely. Downstairs, um, where really? they, um, some of the um, uh, yoga books are. And... There was a woman in the shop and we we just it's one of those things isn't it we just got talking mm -hmm. and she had just got back from an icon course mm -hmm. and she had lost her bag on the course there was something that happened to everybody that sounded like a real challenge yes. you know and, and i just thought that that's yeah that's typical that um for me when i was on the the icon course with aiden hart who's a wonderful teacher um, there were 12 of us. It was almost like we were his disciples. Um, and some life, we were, we were together for three years in a part-time course, a part-time diploma course. And over that three-year period, something life-changing happened to all of us. And the amazing thing is we were, we were together as a, as quite a tight knit group and we were able to support each other. But I did mm -hmm. think it was interesting how um, w we all had a challenge mm -hmm. and had to meet that challenge. And that was all part of that process. Mm -hmm. uh, that reminds I, me of the 40 days process. Yeah. yeah with, with Jesus and just coming yeah. out the other side. You know, there, there is that sort of long, dark night of the soul sometimes in order to sort of rebirth to the light. There's a sort of processing what what are my soul's sort of lessons mm. <clears throat> and growth, mm. the gifts mm. of growth. Yes, they may be turgid at the time. Mm. They may be testing us um, to the max and may be thoroughly unpleasant. Yet, mm. when you come through the other side, how has that changed you at the soul level for yeah. the better? Yeah. For the greater good. And, and the healing process that comes of that mm. sort of, you know, inflection and growth um, is, is there to be shared with, with all, of, all of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 
just to touch back a bit on the crystalline nature, because mm. I, I love crystals. Mm. I love the frequencies. I love the way there's a sense of companionship almost with mm. certain crystals that sort of you would get drawn to. You know, there's um, there's a sense of the crystalline structure and, and like in everything in nature, there's the sort of sacred geometry yeah. underpinning it all. And again, on this call yesterday evening with Evelyn Mulders, um, she was just sharing how with all of nature, all of the creatures, the plants, the trees, insects, everything, they are built on a foundational structure of sacred geometry. And we perceive that through our energy field connecting with them. So that sense of connection with nature Mm-hmm. is so multifaceted and multidimensional. Yeah. No, we can't see that necessarily mm-hmm. with our with our eyes mm-hmm. as the seeing as physical eyes, yet sometimes it's we get a bit of help like an ammonite, right? With a bit of or a snowflake. I mean, how do we feel yes. when we see yeah. that? We just yeah. feel it's yeah. just so beautiful. I, I've got actually. I'll just bring it up on my phone. Um, I've got a picture of um, that some my my beautiful mother in law shared with me recently, and it's um, pictures of water. Um, wow. And yeah. when different musical notes have been played to water in a bowl, can you see the patterns? Wow, now? just. It's stunning, isn't it? The, the 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 symmetry, yeah, beautiful, and the radiant sort of beauty yeah. of these different notes, which is a beautiful segue to sort of connect with this crystal. I've been just feeling these sound essences calling this morning and in preparation for this conversation, because there's crystal elixirs in. There are blessings, the San Janini, San, San Janini prayer in some of them. There's sacred geometry in um, beautiful sound essences. Mm. And, and there's also aromatherapy and, and <clears throat> homeopathy herb, herbs as well. Mm. And the, there are these archangel blessings. And I'm just feeling like it would be lovely to connect and share the energy with you. And for anyone who is is going to watch this, um, right. um, it it would just be. I'm just feeling there's a particular archangel that would like to sort of come and help, sort of infuse with archangel blessings this conversation. Perhaps while we talk about crystals in. Mm in the context of, of the icons. So would, would you be okay if I got a, I'm going to douse and got a, you know, for this conversation, for the highest good of all, with permission, just checking I'm grounded, connected. My energy's flowing the right way. My energy field is clear. Yeah. So I'm just um, asking which, um, I'm just feeling guided to select a, an archangel. Um blessing okay archangel archangel gabriel mm. um is is the sound essence ah this is lovely um archangel gabriel um the sound essence here um that if you can see the wow. image there um wow. soul calling remembrance and destiny so mm. This is just, just, um, Lee, we haven't sort of shared about sound essences together yet. They're, they're vibrational sound healing in, in a bottle. And so anything, if you've ever been to a sound healing session with a gong or crystals or sort of, you know, those beautiful folded metal singing bowls, yeah. um, that what happens a bit like the water oh, with okay. the notes. That happens yes. at our cellular uh, mind, body, spirit level mm. as well. So that resonance, like you're seeing with the flower of life, or it just shimmers through. Mm. And when we, um, it's been bottled because Evelyn 
as this engineer's amazing mind combined with being a master alchemist fused and and followed this journey a bit like the journey that you've described that you've been on you know mm-hmm. you you go on this journey without knowing how it's going to land or how it's going to go what the outcome is you just have to yeah. trust and that's part of the yeah. surrender is part of the yeah. journey the spiritual journey mm-hmm. um and um so uh archangel so so archangel blessings are just fifth dimensional sound healing and vibes and um there's the heart meridian tone and the throat chakra which is note g sharp so it's a bridging chakra the sharp so evelyn's again quite unique i i haven't come across this anywhere else we're mm. aware of the chakra system yeah. with the seven chakras the main chakras you know from the root through to the crown yeah obviously with the yoga traditions as well that's very sort of well understood and, and practiced and established and what evelyn noticed because she's worked in sevens so there's there's these different levels we're, we're working from first dimensional sort of in physical through to sort of emotional second dimensional um third dimensional auric the sort of mental body and then also the heart tones is the fourth dimension and then we get up to fifth dimension um going going on this journey she noticed the notes on the piano of course you have 12 you know so you have these different in between notes you have the white yes. and then you have the yeah. sharps or the flats yeah and she she noticed that in the chakra tradition you have the 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 main notes for the different chakra chakra sort of tones that can be sort of um sung or hummed or re you know those different chakra sounds and then she she got some again downloads and connected um information and she was shown on a journey how the in-between notes are actually on the back um of the body with the chakras and they're bridging chakras so for example um with this particular one with this throat chakra note g um if you go in between the throat and the brow chakra halfway it's right at the top of the spine mm-hmm. and so every one of these bridging ones is is the section of the spine from the sacral to the thoracic etc all the way up to the occipital um and obviously cervical as well and and then you 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 go through these different levels and it helps bridge to the next level. So it bridges from here to here. Um, mm. And so it, it's it's worth exploring and I'll, I'll yeah. probably put some links or some information on, on, on this when we, when we post this video. Um, but yeah, there's something very special in those bridging chakras, a bit like, it's a bit like the spiritual journey, isn't it? You, you yeah. can go, and you're starting, you get the ruckus or the, the blips or the sort of, you know, obstacles to yeah. overcome, and then you get to the next level and then the yeah. next level. So here we go. So the what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, activate it by shaking it, and then I'm going to miss this for us. I'm going to send it your way and for any future um, sort of viewer of, of this conversation uh, for soul calling, remembrance, and destiny. Let's see see what happens when we're talking about crystals yep. and all of these things. So here we go. I'm just going to spray and then send it your way intentionally. You can receive, breathe it in. Thanking Archangel Gabriel, noticing what we notice. Mm. Mm. Quite often, mm. quiet and silence feels so fitting. Appropriate, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Some people um, with the sound essences, because there's no separation time space, some people mm-hmm. feel a mist in their energy field. Some people have clair sentience and 
and uh, sort of can and have a sense of the beautiful aromas. Um, some people just feel it in their body or their energy field in, in some kind of way. Um, it's very softening anyway. and um, It feels it. I get a sense of that, definitely. Mm. Soul calling, remembrance, destiny. Mm. Mm. So thanks, Lee, for being open to re receiving that. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And um, what what we were starting to sort of connect with crystals mm. and the crystalline. So I guess there's, a, again, a bit like the process you were talking about with the gesso and the multi-layers. And, and mm. I guess there's a process for gathering the pigments and preparing. Yeah. And part of that rigor and discipline, but also honoring the materials mm. um, and the depths, I can imagine with lapis lazuli, the blue is so rich, isn't it? It is. Um, and deep. It is. I mean, on one level, we have, um, today things are so commercialised that it's very easy for us to get hold of um, lapis or other precious, semi-precious stones. Um, and certainly in the past, if it was a big commission, then the money would be there for the early iconographers to get that sort of material. Certainly um, through Afghanistan, I think, and I think there were places for lapis in Russia itself, I think. Um, but there were places, monasteries in the middle of nowhere so those monks had to work with the earth around them. So they would choose whatever was at their feet uh, for colour mm -hmm. and then work with that. And it's incredible how you can mix quite a range of different colours just with a very, very limited palette of maybe, say, three colours uh, a black, um, a yellow, yellow ochre, and a red earth. Um, the black will mix with the yellow, and you can get a range of uh, greens from that, um, surprisingly, and it's quite incredible. So the intuitive sense was to take what was around and, and work with that. And um, I have no doubt, and it's it's it was written by Richard Temple, who um, wrote, uh, has written some uh, incredible books on icons because he, he's one of the foremost um, uh, authorities on, on icons, really. But he, he has said that he has no doubt that the iconographers infused the stones and rocks that they were drawn to um, mm. because they were... Oper operating at such a high level of, of consciousness beautiful uh, which is which is incredible wow. that's yeah. that's incredible and um when when you've described in the past as well mm -hmm. Lee, when the essence of the saint or the light being that you're creating mm -hmm. in the form of an icon comes mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. How could you describe that a little bit? Because it's quite connected with the, you know, you're putting the intention and infusing that those frequencies and beautiful high vibes into the materials themselves. You're consciously mm. collecting them. It's almost like foraging kind of feeling, yeah. isn't it? That you are yeah. where it's of the earth where you are placed yeah. in that time space. And how how does it feel when you're, you know, you've chosen, you've got the kernel of the idea of of who who to represent in this beautiful art form. What happens and how does it feel when you chart I think Because you're um, researching the saint, you're living with the idea of the saint. And I had a few, I had about four or five commissions for St Cuthbert in a row. Mm. And I was experiencing a very wise surrounding energy a, 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 um, almost a, a 
protective and guiding energy around that and which was beautiful because that was when I had started painting them properly so um it was nice to have that energy around and I thought that was going to be it I thought that was wonderful and then when I had the commission for St Maximus the energy changed he, it became this quick mercurial Ooh. energy um uh, I sensed an intelligence behind it so that really was the sort of flag to say actually as you move to concentrate on a different saint the energy changes and then you notice that that's not your instigation of it it's coming from elsewhere um and when i you know further researched st maximus he was a, an incredible um an incredibly intelligent man a mercurial character he was relied upon um by um he was well he was actually in the emperor's court at one stage if i remember correctly um so that was amazing and then of course with sri yukteswar mm. that was very different again mm. because when i was contemplating the photograph that enabled that particular portrayal of him it was apparent to me that he was in samadhi um and that picture was taken when he was in state of 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 samadhi a state of you know grace and despite trying to meditate to I felt I needed to connect with that in order to portray him properly but it failed me you know and 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 I I you know that's brought up a lot about um portraiture really mm. uh, because I was trying to connect with something I just I, I missed the mark because i really sensed that that was beyond where i'm at he he being in that state it was so moving to look at that picture uh repeatedly mm. to um to try and and portray him because it was it was loved for coming from that picture mm. and to it you know i i have butter fingers in terms of trying to connect that um and portray that um there was so much shadow in the photograph it was an old photograph so i took it into photoshop to get rid of a lot of the shadow so when people see the portrait it does it's without that shadow it is uh, and i felt it should be without it but mm. even so um to really connect with that i i alas um i missed it but i um but it was a very um it was a it was a beautiful feeling of love mm -hmm. from um and that was you know it was wonderful to to paint the icon i mean there mm -hmm. were lots of challenges with the icon lots of challenges with the gilding um at every stage there was a challenge um and uh tough uh, um the sanskrit getting that right so you know mm. each icon you move on to has has another <laughs> pandora's box of surprises <laughs> um so do you think do you think Lee, you might do another shri yukteswar icon at some point because it sounds like when mm. you did the first St Cuthbert ones you kind of felt this beautiful yeah. energy and that presence coming through you yeah it, it feels like when you're describing this you know the samadhi state state of grace this sort of you know infinite unconditional love coming through mm. his eyes I as the viewer feel it Oh wow! <laughs> well, then that's that's, 
and then incredible and and that was um that that's the gift of grace that's mm. given the icon mm. um for the viewer i think that Absolutely. i think the interesting thing is there's there's something that is given to the iconographer yeah. and something that is given to the viewer and they may well be entirely different things and i'm very grateful to hear you say that's wonderful well i like i i was saying earlier i i kind of got lost in it because it's so beautiful the you know the the energy is is so transcendent and you can cannot i i kind of ran out what you can't get the words because that's the bliss state is is there are no yeah. words for it yeah. um yeah. and and the he he his presence is is hundred percent there um and and you you you've you've um you you know i've seen the photograph that that you've painted from i've i've seen right. documentary on on the yeah. story of yogananda yeah. and I, we've got the book at home and and right. it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful beautiful book and he's such a beautiful soul but he went through his own trials and tribulations at his yeah. master's sort of, you know, yeah. instruction, right? So yes. that he yeah. had to do. And and um yeah. and the, there's that tradition of of growth through sort mm. of struggles. Um yeah. and we get lighter and brighter as a result. And 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 you were talking, I'm just gonna sort of connect this with the what you were mentioning earlier about feeling like there's two aspects mm. to, to how you are, how you're working. There's this sort of deeper wisdom there, the presence, a sense of presence, and then there's the the little me, if you like, you know, yes. that sort of identity led sort of view on you know yeah. uh, the uh reality in air quotes. And yeah. um I, I wonder because we we when we talked before we we did a higher self sort of connection and, and meditation. Um, mm. Is is it that you're talking about that that sense of the soul self level the infinite? Yes, yes definitely. Who we really are. And I I have to say that meditation is quite extraordinary because um, the small self says, okay, if someone's going to give me a guided meditation. I will do it. But the expectation of there being suddenly a lightning strike is not, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not because I think I've gone through all the, a lot of the orthodox um, readings of Philokalia, uh, things like that. You, you tend not to, the ego tends not to be open to meditation, a guided meditation for someone else. Mm. But since your technique, when we had that talk, was, was so helpful, I thought, no, I'm really going to give this my concentration. When, when you offered that kindly when we last spoke, I thought, I'm really going to give this my, con you know, my concentration because, because I, you know, yeah, my ego was up for it, okay? <laughs> And I have to say, uh, after you finished, we ended the conversation. And it was a good job because I could not form a sentence. Um, and I was just in a safe state of complete surrender, complete contentment. Um, and that went on for a good hour or so. Mm. And I actually had to <laughs> try and concentrate on forming words again and and um <laughs> and and that was extraordinary so i'm really grateful for that mm. and and maybe if i'd had more of that enjoyed that um before i painted tree of Tishwar, then that might have helped as a sort of a, a push start to 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 get a bit, a bit closer not you know, I mean, still at this stage, but it would have it would have helped, I think, mm. definitely. And and 
thank you. It, it, thank you. Yeah, yeah, such a pleasure to share Great. that with you. And, and um, yeah, I find doing that higher self meditation, mm. just a few minutes of breath and relaxing the body and inviting our higher self to merge with us, mm. it kind of helps us remember this is who we really are. Mm. And our little me uh, identity yeah. believes it's driving the car mm. of us and our being or flying the ship. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yet, actually, it's more like that's the kid in the back with the the sort of pretend thing. Yeah. There's yeah. something else. Yeah. Driving this vehicle. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's transparent and yes. it's infinite and it's unchanging yet mm. forever, that infinite presence and connection. Yeah. And it's it's almost like we need to just either allow that little kid in the back with the, the pretend car driving mm. kit to mm. just carry on doing that, but maybe with some headphones on, a bit of a distraction with like a driving yeah. game or whatever. Just just do your thing over there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of reconnecting. That's absolutely it. <laughs> we we yeah. really are. Yeah. Yet we can integrate that little kid into us as well mm. and to, to just in, learn to enjoy that deepened mm. presence and – sense that creativity, sense that openness, sense that limitlessness mm. and be in awe of it because we just forget yeah. that's who we always have been and always will be. Yeah. Um, and that connection to all souls, all of life and existence, past, present, future, it's just all one. Mm. And we're, I think a lot of us are re-remembering that. But it, it's kind yeah. of like it's always there. It never went away. Yes. But our mind believes or constructs the concept that actually it's gone, it's over there, I can't get it. Actually, mm. you're not God. <laughs> little yes. me. You're yeah. not in charge of this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got your little driving yeah. wheel, maybe a bit plasticky in the back seat. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's just, it, it, it's like, like you're saying with the discipline mm. and the rigour, um, yeah. that can can be incredibly beneficial mm. um, to help keep that mind busy with the prayers or the mantras yeah. or the yogic practice or the sort of you know art uh, you know this beautiful icon mm. sort of process of start to end. It's a complete mm. journey of life, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I'm I'm wondering if if you know when when I'm writing i love to get into that higher self state because i feel like i'm channeling rather than writing i'm it's not me my yeah. little in charge yeah. i'm just being and allowing energy or grace or insights to flow through me and i might be able to type or write to capture those mm. concepts I, I think your use of the word integrated is has has sort of given me a eureka moment because I think that is the word that I have been looking for in order to explain to myself how you are. You have integrated all of those things from the higher self mm. that I've been reading about. And that is what's joyful for me mm. to see because you know, it's like apparently um, the guy who first ran the one minute mile, that was amazing that he'd done that. And after that, everybody had it in their mindset that it was possible. Mm -hmm. So within, I don't know how many, how much time it was, everybody was running a one minute mile. You have, you have to take the pioneer. You have to watch the pioneer to say it's, it's possible, you know, um, and I think my relationship between the two, uh, between the higher self and the small self is getting better. Mm -hmm. It's like, and, and the only way I can describe this is I'm a Taurian. So I really like if I'm painting or doing something creative, I like to have nice tools, you know. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. higher self has said, okay, you can have a nice compass, <laughs> you know. So the little ego said, oh, lovely compass, <laughs> you know. <laughs> To work, to be able to work and, and really enjoy 
I mean, most of the tools I've got are actually secondhand, um, but they're really good ones, you know. Mm, um, yeah. And and so it's just, oh, I can use my compass. Yes, I'll do it so I can use my compass. You know, it's, <laughs> it's pathetic, really. But then that is, you know, what the ego is like. But but it's like, um, yeah, the, the higher self is sort of stroking on the head and saying, OK, OK. And, and humoring us in, in some way but um mm. yeah absolutely and and i think yes integration is is the key because for, for for some of the teachings or traditions where it's about the spiritual journey to to you know full mm. you know enlightenment let's say um some of them try to describe that that identity and the ego as not evil but kind of less than or to be abolished or deconstructed or destroyed or burnt through or whatever and for my life experience and and feeling it doesn't sit with me comfortably yeah, I, yeah. I i feel like i feel like loving that little mm. me into the oneness of who we really are yeah. is is beautiful and it feels creative it feels more sort of old paradigm old world that sort of destructive destroyer i think i think there's there's something in things collapsing or chaos or destruction or whatever in order yeah. to rebirth I, I absolutely understand and connect with that for the sort of rhythms and the sort of cycles yeah. of life and experience and yet that that if you if you describe the ego or, or the little me or my identity as as my mm. psyche, it there's there's a really beautiful way of integrating those parts of the psyche, the 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 part of my psyche that um needs approval or seeks approval mm. or doesn't want to offend anyone in case you get told off or you know yeah. um yeah. sort yeah. of disliked or you know yeah. rejected yeah. um it's the sort of when they come up in in our you know life it's the sort of hand on the heart space and just breathing in mm. i love you thank you for coming up and helping me process that emotion i love you you know and and yeah. i i just just that integrative feeling yeah. it can help with experiencing all that there is you know yeah. there's, there's it's less reductive or sort of banishing energy it's more like mm. no come home come home yeah. to my heart yeah um yeah, yeah. and and when whenever i pick up on energy that doesn't belong to me let's say and it's i feel maybe i'm been somewhere busy or stressful or wherever and and maybe something in my energy field that's been dropped in there by somebody else who's been stressed or some sort mm -hmm. of other sort of impression in the building or the space you, sometimes you pick up stuff like mm -hmm. picking up a bug you know it's that same kind of thing yeah and when i um when i discern that and i feel actually these thoughts don't feel like my thoughts they feel a bit more like down about things or I'm feeling hungry, but I've eaten. Do you get these sort of symptoms, if you like, a bit like, yeah. you know, yes. picking yes. up other people's or other yeah. buildings, sort of remnants of stuff. And mm -hmm. I just um, put my hand on my heart and I just say, if there's anything in my field that needs recognizing or respecting, please may it be reintegrated through the doorway to heaven that is my heart with love and honor. May it be so. Thank you. And amen. And that little statement there, it's again integrative and it's loving. It's not again exorcist banishing kind of. You know, it's more like come home. Yes, yeah. Let's, let's all come home to ourselves. Yeah. And my heart's your heart. There's yeah. no separation. And um, please come home to to heaven. You know. So that, that makes utter sense to me because if um it's said that we uh our universe our own personal universe is us projected outwards and if that's the case then in banishing 
something, mm. it's still there as the shadow, yes. isn't exactly. it? So we're not actually assimilating and integrating mm. all of the things that maybe we find shameful or they're still there when they're not there's not a um a cure for them you know so yes what you're saying sounds absolutely right to me mm. yeah yeah and and then the trick is i feel to not attach to that and make it the job the day-to-day -day job like oh i must do this oh, i must integrate yeah. You know? yeah because then that's the ego yes. you kind of become a spiritual sure. ego and then spiritual ego will be like have i gained have i lost where am yeah, I on the scale? Judgment on that, yeah. Can I calibrate the heck out of this, you know? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, yeah, that, that experiential feeling of grace is mm -hmm. is is an absolute honey, isn't it? Yeah, it, uh, is. it is. And And is there anything, if anyone's sort of interested to find out more about mm -hmm. icons, either, you know, people who would like to explore the how to make icons or how to appreciate icons, where, where would you suggest people look? Um, there's quite a good website. Um, I think it's orthodoxarts.com. Mm. Um, we'll put it in a link. As yes, well. I'll send you the link so you can supply that. That's yeah. very good for an overview mm. of what's going on in the contemporary world. And it's got some um background information on early icons and things like that that's that's very good that's um done by jonathan i can't pronounce his surname and i'm not going to try it um he's a canadian guy he's okay. actually also on youtube um and i think to be honest um what i always say to people is if you go to a web browser and you key in orthodox icon and as a first step, and then print out an image of an icon that just you're drawn to, mm -hmm. and then pin it up in a place that you're going to be passing or, you know, in the bathroom every morning you're seeing it or something like that. Just live with it for a week and just see what comes from that. And that tends to have its own way of magnetizing other things to you that will be helpful to your particular path. Um, so I think that's the, that's the best advice. Orthodox Arts, the website would be great for people just to, just to get sort of a, a view of contemporary iconographers. Um, they, they are Orthodox painters, all of them. Um, so uh, in the tradition, but um, okay. There's, there's nothing sort of um, better, really, than to allow your own intuitive inner voice to to guide you to the next step. So the Google search is is probably yeah. the first <laughs> point of call. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. That that sounds really amazing. And and you said just to sort of, I guess, finish off. Um, mm. You said that you had some work that that is part part way is in motion right now. Could you tell oh. us a bit about this and? You know, what are you working on? This is the Archangel Michael. Oh, wow. Um, I've worked on a lot of um, icons for commission, but this is something I feel I need to live with. Mm. And he will, I think, help me with my discipline. Um, he is associated with, um, depending on... Um, some sort of orthodox dogma um, from where you, you, you sort of get the information, but he is really a tester of souls um, and provider of challenges. Um, I guess that's a more esoteric view of, of um, what he's capable of, but also um, a, a protector. And, mm. Mm, yes, uh, with the, the sword and shield of truth. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. And that, that sword can help us cut cords as well. If yes. We, we need his support or help us with our energy field and being protected by him. He's he's just majestically magnificent, isn't he? And uh, that power and strength and that sense of shield, that, mm. that sort of rigour behind that is, is, is 
stunning. Oh, the, he's he's incredible, and the gold. That's so yes, it's um. Quite, there are a few scratches. It's it's quite old. This one, a dip, dip gilding, several years ago. Um, but you remind me actually in, in mentioning the sword because um, um, an esoteric view of the sword would be that it is a symbol of discernment. Mm. So you are also the act of um, fission. Really, you are taking. Um, you are viewing your life and viewing all the things that need to fall away and all the things that need to be um, continued with. Um, so you're making decisions as to what is helpful to life and, and what can be released. So that's also um, wow. quite a significant thing. I love that. So that, That's really powerful as well. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Yeah, just the luminosity and the depth that you're creating here is just absolutely stunning. Thank you. Thank well, you. the gold is the uncreated light. It's it it mm -hmm. symbolizes um, light beyond which we well we need other senses to see that that light. But um, yeah, amazing. Thank you very much for. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, conversations because I've always found them really uplifting and and so much to think about afterwards. Um, thank you, Alex. <laughs> well, we'll carry these on, I'm sure. And thank you so much, Lee, for your time. Pleasure. Pleasure.